Our next talk is from Christian Korb. Uh, while he was born in Hamburg, he now works in Zurich at Jung von Matt Tech. And as we heard yesterday, these great NEOS enthusiasts can't wait to host a NEOS sprint. <laughs> so way to We're go, We're really Jung von bullying Matt. them into that, aren't you? <laughs> they, they have to do that now, right? We're live streaming that to the internet. Yeah, oh, it's, it's news now. In his talk, uh, he will show us uh, a project where he combined progressive web app and AMP technology technologies for the Micro Summer Camp. So, enjoy Christian's talk. Hello everybody, welcome to the NeosCon 2020 talk about MicroBuddy uh, PWA with AMP. But before we start, I would like to say a big thank you to the NEOS Conference Orga team for having us here at this great event and also to uh, all of you out there joining remotely and taking part and so making NEOS uh, a great community. A little bit info to myself. My name is uh, Christian Koop. I'm a technical consultant at uh, Jungfirma Tech. I started as developer in 1998 and my hobbies are my family, uh, Lego and Star Trek. Jungfirma Tech, we are an uh, owner-managed creative technology agency in Zurich. Uh, we are 12 people strong, founded this year, uh, known for our work for CKW, uh, Rika Miko, Emmy or Arco Hotels. Uh, we unite creative excellence with expertise in fields like customer experience, digital transformation, brand experience and business solutions. In a nutshell, what is the body all about? It's a progressive web app with a variety of features for the barbecue fan. Countless recipes, recipe inspiration, great grill tips, a grill timer and a grill quiz for the gamification character. The campaign ran over 16 weeks in summer 2019. This is how it looked like and uh, we will go in detail what we did to achieve this. Why the setup of PWA and AMP? Because of requirements like app-like behavior, uh, should be installable, high zero performance and coping with high traffic. What was our approach then? Okay, we'd like to uh, get the uh, app-like behavior done by the PWA. Uh, of course, to have it installable by the PWA, high zero performance by the AMP and coping with uh, high traffic, of course, very, very good caching. High traffic, what did it mean for us? We had to serve to over 40,000 concurrent users. Uh, we were featured in the Migro newsletter as top feature with uh, 1.25 million readers. Uh, we had a CDN in place, uh, static deployment for maximum caching and AMP for mobile search optimization and performance. So let's have a closer look at the PWA part. Making a PWA, you can follow uh, certain patterns. Uh, our pattern for uh, coping with this um, project was the PRPL pattern, standing for push, render, pre-cache and lazy load. Push and render. Uh, this has been resolved by generating an app shell. All parts uh, common to individual pages like header, footer and preloader have been pre-rendered uh, for all entry points of our application. Markup was also embedded um, as well as critical style sheets and JavaScripts. So uh, we could display content uh, correctly and quickly. 
Now we also had separate entry points for all main base modules. Pre-cache. When the user first comes to the site in the background, uh, we are using the service worker for all module related with other pages, routes, they all were preloaded then. And when navigation occurred, the associated files uh, then could be returned quickly. Daisy loading for the stuff on demand, the application um, uh, took then uh, lazy load uh, those Angular modules. All pages were organized uh, into independent modules that were loaded when the particular page was requested. To lazy load, Angular modules use load children instead of compose. So this is our service worker here. You can see uh, load children here. You can see the routes for recipes, timer tips, uh, the quiz. So it gives you a good overview of the application uh, itself. Uh, we use Workbox by Google as service worker, as we think it's a great tool to use. So you might uh, want to check it out. Um, the main advantages uh, we used here in this project was uh, pre-caching and runtime caching. But as you can see, there are many more. So um, we can definitely recommend using it. One of the uh, feature of Service Worker is the ability to save uh, a set of files to the cache when the Service Worker is installing. Uh, so this pre-caching uh, lets you uh, save content um, ahead of the Service Worker being used. This is a quite good feature. So our Workbox uh, caching configuration, as you can see, it is uh, pretty easy. Uh, just index file, JS, and CSS files. So uh, you can also find your way pretty good here um, configuring it. So the service worker um, will be shown in a second. Um, based, of course, on the uh, configuration above you already saw. Um, so we defined uh, routes for various caching strategies um, to fit our needs. So here in the service worker, uh, you can see um, that we handle uh, images, uh, scripts, and uh, styles. So that gave us the opportunity to have them pre-cached modules um, and use the runtime cache. There are several strategies to do so. Um, so this worker workbox gives you a stale while. We validate cache first, network first, or network only. Uh, we used here cache first for the images and stale while we validate for uh, styles and scripts. Stay while we validate always serves from the cache. So if it's not there, it goes to the network, fills the cache, and then it's uh, served from there as where cache first looks first in the cache. If it's not there, it's directly served from the network and then uh, put to the cache. Generated uh, service worker look like this. All pre-cached files have a revision number and unique name. Uh, so uh, you don't have a problem updating to a new version of the application. And uh, an additional advance is if the file is not changed, uh, the number of the revision is not changed, uh, you can use the cached file on the browser side. So the second part uh, today would be then uh, regarding the AMP part. So here's Hello Neoscom 2020 as AMP HTML. Generally speaking, Google is looking for uh, such markup and uh, will put um, this content to their uh, AMP cache, which is the Google CDN. And if you are searching on mobile, 
your search result, as you can see it here, might have this flash icon and an A and P indicator so that you know, okay, this is a mobile um, accelerated page. And um, the AMP viewer then pre renders an AMP document in a hidden iframe. That makes it so fast because it directly comes uh, from the Google CDN. In our project, um, AMP should work as entry point for the PWA, should work as data source for the PWA, and of course, uh, shall it make possible to be found on the mobile search. AMP is entry point. How does this work? The AMP uh, entry point would then be a Google search uh, normally, and each link on the AMP page then redirects the user to the PWA, as you can see on the figure on the right. So, good strategy there is to make the entry point in your site uh, an AMP page and then warm up the PWA behind the scenes. So all content pages are additionally prepared as AMP so they can be loaded very quickly and uh, the user sees it right after clicking on the search result. Uh, on the AMP page, uh, we use the special component AMP install service worker to warm up the cache while the user uh, is using uh, the content page on the AMP version. All user actions then uh, on the AMP website redirects to the corresponding page on the PWA side. So the first thing uh, we need to consider is embedding the AMP component AMP install service worker in the head section, like you can see it here. Next, we use this component to run our service worker in the background. And no display does the trick here. So we could load while the user hasn't even reached our page. Then the other way around, AMP is data source for PWA. Uh, so pages with a steady AMP HTML could be reused in the PWA as content fragment. One of the core features of AMP uh, pages is they are easy and safe to embed. So when building a PW, uh, PWA, you can receive uh, the same benefits and uh, reduce uh, backend uh, complexity by reusing your AMP pages as data source for the PWA. Let's have a closer look. So, using then the AMP shadow lib. This um, is very useful. So we load the AMP library for uh, use of the rele relevant parts um, of the page. Shadow AMP API was used to render a page. So we load the next page asynchronously and use AMP attach shadow doc to render it in the defined container. This gives you a good overview. So header, footer, PWA, AMP content fragment uh, in the middle. So an overview on the left, uh, you would see the um, like website uh, um, output and on the right, uh, the PWA. So over here, you have a browser address bar, you have the browser OS bar at the bottom. Uh, you would have PWA header and uh, navigation bar for the uh, native UI um, experience and AMP content uh, in the middle. So an AMP content uh, could not just link uh, to the PWA, and then uh, AMP content is also shown in PWA. This works pretty good. So it's a good approach. If you like to try it, check it out. We can recommend it. As long 
as this happens, uh, somebody calls and says, I need you to implement custom JS. Then you need an Earl Grey hot and get back to work again. Okay, so if this is not steady static or AMP uh, compliant, um, you, know, you need to do something else. So in our case, um, the transformation of the content to JSON was done to solve that. So JSON takes Manhattan and we take JSON as fallback. So how to structure data in EOS to be readable by the PWA front end? Front end of our project was divided to various section, so pretty much similar to web pages. This allows us to take an approach where one document node in the NEOS panel holds all data needed by one section of the PWA. And uh, so enabling us to use standard routing like um, where the front end node root part handler is responsible for finding and fetching requested documents from the content repository. This is how the final routing looks like. The only difference uh, from a regular front-end uh, root shipped with NEOS is that we are using JSON as default format and the rest is the same. So no custom controller needed here. What else did we do? Step one, translate structure to JSON. So our approach was to generate the proper data structure and at the end convert it to JSON and code it in a string in one uh, function call. Next, bind our JSON renderer to our routing. This code runs just before forming the whole response. Here you can see uh, plain mapping uh, of node metadata and properties to properties uh, of JSON encoded objects. For name of node type goes uh, into a type property or children are rendered recursively in the same way under children key. Next step, getting data from the content repository to be converted to JSON. Step four, making content and repository node subtree to be rendered recursively. Uh, with extending uh, the base structure renderer prototype, we can implement uh, children rendering. So, a little bit more was to do, of course, there, um, besides, uh, otherwise you would have been uh, ended up with children 00, zero props URL, but of course you would like to have something like children hero background image props URL. And uh, so we created our own Neos Fusion Map PHP implementation, especially for this purpose of JSON rendering. So as you can see here, we took this uh, dot data structure and in the end, uh, we could end up with uh, something like a uh, homepage hero, which is very helpful. And then in this uh, project, we also stumbled um, upon something um, you might think is also of interest for you and your work. So uh, Fusion Content Cache uh, implementation treats everything that uh, Fusion renders as a string. And the Fusion Cache implementation, uh, we need to hack to probably handle uh, JSON encoding for our content segments. Uh, Neos Content Cache then uh, injects cache segment markers into the rendered content. Um, and <laughs> unfortunately, this broke our JSON encoding. Um, so to cope with uh, these NEOS markers, we extended uh, uh, the JSON encoding. So um, be careful there. Next thing I'd like to mention was uh, content dimensions. So the project's uh, peak was divided to uh, 60 weeks. And next to common content dimensions uh, like language, uh, we added 
a weak dimension with 16 possible values uh, corresponding to each week in the campaign and uh, one special fallback week. And that fallback week uh, provided content uh, for all places where the content should change. And with a little routing hack, uh, we were able to switch uh, default week dimension value basing on the current date. In combination of this and automatic cache clearing and pre-rendering every static content, uh, we found an easy way to meet a client's content requirements as, of course, every week there were new flyers out with new products that should be in here, should match uh, the barbecue preferences and uh, also the recipes. So this needed to be uh, on time there because uh, that was spread out in Switzerland every week at the same time. This is uh, how this looks like, and um, whenever I look at this, I see this. So AMP in our project uh, works as entry point for the PWA. Yes, it did. Works as data source uh, for AMP. Yes, that's a good idea. And is found on mobile search as AMP site. Also, definitely yes. Conclusion. So, um, PWA and AMP uh, work very well together. NEOS is a very good CMS to provide content in such a project. Uh, but mind the gap, if non-AMP uh, compliant requirements are requested, uh, you need to be flexible. How did it perform? Over 1 million sessions were generated, uh, 80 plus more traffic than the year before, 580 plus thousand unique visitors, uh, a rise of nearly 50%, over 180,000 returning uh, quiz users, so that was uh, quite interesting there, and uh, over 40,000 times this Inspirator was uh, shaken. So uh, that's kind of nice. So the people liked it. And uh, over a hundred thousand times uh, the grill timer uh, was used. So somebody was uh, using this app while they were standing at their grill, which is also a nice uh, notice here. So how did I perform? I would like to get uh, your feedback. Send me an email. Connect to me on LinkedIn or Xing and uh, meet me at the meetup in Zurich uh, for the NEOS group. Um, or we will see us hopefully all again in person at the NEOSCon 2021. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. That was... Thanks. A really interesting talk. And we're lucky to have you live uh, for a couple of questions. So, yeah, thanks. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Great to see you. So, of course, the first and most important question is the background you were recording your talk in front of. What was that? That was awesome. Uh, thanks. Uh, that's uh, in the tattoo studio where uh, my oldest son is. Uh, Making his the two artists uh, job. Oh, wow! Yeah. Very cool. That you know, we should we should probably collect, uh, make a collection of all the cool backgrounds people used <laughs> for recording their talks mm -hmm. and make a voting on that. Um, mm -hmm. That was that was really cool. Um, in addition to you know our our questions, um, there, there was something in the chat um, about how did you deploy your your application? Did you use code splitting? Yeah, yeah, this is um, a really f uh, strong uh, recommendation here, as uh, Dimitri uh, wrote, and also was talking uh, yesterday about uh, PWA. Um, so you have to really, really see uh, which files are exchanged and which not, 
Uh, otherwise, you will uh, be screwed in the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, at the end of your talk, you showed some statistics of how the uh, application performed and uh, un under w which kind of load uh, you were. Um, so, can you describe a little bit? Did you do some stress testing, performance testing? Yes, yes, we did. Uh, that was uh, a big part of this project. Uh, so we had uh, several iterations um, to know that we are safe to to stand this uh, high load. And um, I can recommend if you are uh, in need of a good team to do this, uh, reach out for uh, Stormforger, uh, which was doing those uh, tests and um, yeah, bombing us with traffic. <laughs> Which which kind of infrastructure did you use? Did you use some some cloud or how did you do that? Uh, we had uh, three web servers, uh, Redis cache, uh, CDN in front of that, and then uh, multiple uh, data sources uh, that we uh, had requests to send out via API. And um, yeah, that was uh, quite good to have that tested because. Uh, Some stuff wasn't uh, reachable from the outside, so we had to also store this on our side and make it uh, static, 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 where we could. It's really, uh, it's really cool um, to see um, both technologies, AMP and uh, PWA, play together with NEOS in your, um, in your showcase, in your project, um, it, because it complements the talks that we've had in the past about how to theoretically build uh, PWA applications. And Dimitri's talk yesterday, where he, where he went into great depth about how to do it. And now it was you're... Great your example of a real world project with a lot and a lot of traffic um you did talk about um neos uh, quite a bit so of course i would be interested um did you get some feedback from the editors who provided the content and everything you said you used content dimensions and how mm -hmm. did they work um did that work out well for them using neos in this headless way to um sending out the json content Yeah, that worked, uh, that worked uh, out quite good. I mean, with uh, very several categories of content. So you can uh, see structured content like recipes. Uh, that was um, quite easy to do. Uh, and then we had, of course, uh, some, I would say, storytelling content uh, that was then a little bit others um, editorial uh, approach for us. Uh, as we had um, there uh, more flexibility to show. That's really cool. I would like to see that project on Neos.io as a, as a detailed case study. So I will tell the Marketing Guild, Marketing Guild, um, to get in touch with you um, to, to get those information on, on the website. I think it's a brilliant showcase for Neos. Um, okay, Christian, Thanks. thank you very much for your time and your talk. Um, that, was, that was really awesome. I do hope to see you Uh, again for NEOS Conference 2021. And of course, we're really looking forward to that sprint in Zurich at Jung von Matt. So let's get yeah, started. You're preparing welcome. That. <laughs> We can start tomorrow. <laughs> All right, Christian, thank you very much. Talk to you later. Okay, bye bye. bye, -bye.